Israeli leader pushing back against international and domestic pressure over hostages still held in Gaza as frustration and anger mount following the deaths of six captives in the Palestinian enclave. He has stressed no one is more committed than he is to freeing the captives. Nationwide protests are carrying on for a third straight day as demonstrators push for an immediate ceasefire to facilitate the return of hostages. An estimated 100 captives remain in Gaza, but a third of them are believed to be dead. Israel's envoy to the United Nations says the Security Council is expected to convene tomorrow to hold an official discussion on Israeli captives for the first time. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization in Gaza says it has surpassed polio vaccination targets on day three of its mass campaign, with more than 161,000 children under the age of 10 being vaccinated in the past two days in central Gaza. The organization says at least 90% of Gaza children need to be vaccinated for the campaign to work. The campaign relies on daily eight-hour pauses and fighting between Israel and Hamas in specific areas of the enclave. Health teams are expected to move on to southern Gaza later this week and then northern Gaza. And for more, Sarah Coates joins us live from Tel Aviv. Sarah, the WHO lauding the success of its polio vaccination campaign, at least so far. But Anwar says it's hard to get to children in other parts of Gaza. Take us through how dire the humanitarian situation is there. Hello there, Wei Su. Well, it is dire. We are talking here about 90% of the 2.3 million people in the Strip currently displaced. A lot of infrastructure destroyed, hospitals, roads. So these are proving significant challenges, of course, for these health authorities to actually get in there and deliver these vaccines to these children who so desperately need it. But then there are other elements that we need to take into account, like lack of fuel, which, of course, is causing problems to keep these vaccinations cool. And then what is needed, actually, are two doses one month apart. And with these people just constantly being moved around, this also poses yet another challenge. So certainly this is of major concern to health authorities on the ground. We're talking here some 640,000 children, 10 and under, who actually need to get this vaccine after polio was found in the Gaza Strip for the first time in 25 years. Wei Su. Oh, Sarah, uh, on uh, negotiations for a ceasefire, and we frequently talk about this on the bulletin, a hope for reaching that truth, ebbing and flowing, depending on who is visiting what region and speaking to whom at that point. Where are we on ceasefire negotiations? Really doesn't seem as though these talks are going anywhere at all way soon. We heard this from the US President Joe Biden just yesterday. He said to reporters that he doesn't think that the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is doing enough to reach a ceasefire and hostage agreement with Hamas in Gaza. And right now we're hearing from a number of US officials that Biden is preparing a take it or leave it deal. And if this is not taken by the Israeli Prime Minister, by Hamas, then this could potentially spell the end of the US's involvement in these negotiations. And we also need to take into account what we did hear from Benjamin Netanyahu during that press conference last night, extremely defiant, really doubling down on his demand for IDF forces to remain in the Philadelphia corridor. That is, of course, that very narrow strip of land, that buffer zone that separates Gaza and Egypt. He says that despite the pressure that he's facing, that is nothing compared to what Israel will face if military forces do pull out of that corridor. So certainly this is the main sticking point. Hamas has been saying that it will not agree to a ceasefire unless there's a full withdrawal of Israeli forces. But given what we heard from Netanyahu, that is not going to happen. And this, of course, is causing a lot of worry of these family members of the hostages who do remain in the Strip, especially after what we heard from Hamas yesterday putting out a statement saying that Netanyahu's insistence on liberating the prisoners through military pressure instead of conceding a deal will mean that they will return to their families inside coffins. And way soon, more protests expected around the country this evening. Oh, thanks, Sarah Coates, reporting live from Tel Aviv.